Hi guys. I'm just going to wait a few minutes here. my glasses on so I can see. Hi Jolie. I've never done this so bear with me. Hey, good morning. The sound is too low, thank you. studio. Um, I didn't have a video today, so I thought I would do a quick live and bear with me here. Hi, Melissa. Johanna. Hi, Gail. So what I'm going to do um, today is hopefully interact with you. My friend was going to come help and she had to go. She had something come up. So um, I'm going to kind of be like talking and painting at the same time, but I got these new, I don't know if you guys have seen these, these new stuck, they're called stuck up piggies. Um, and they're so pretty. Oh my goodness. They're, I love the names. They're funny, pretentious, boastful, and pompous. So <laughs> they're like, um, they're pretty spendy. Uh, so, you know, I've, uh, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, why are they so expensive? But then I got my hands in them and I realized that they're pretty incredibly beautiful. So what I did is I'm going to do a little bloom swipe for you guys this morning. Um, hi guys. So I mixed it just with a blue, as a bloom recipe, um, which was, I started with Josanio varnish with the pigment. And then I added in some Bare 7300 untinted satin enamel and some varathane polyurethane triple thick and got this kind of nice consistency so all right guys i'm going to get you down on my canvas it's right below me it's a 12 by 12 inch um, little gallery wrap canvas here show you some other colors I'm going to be working with. I, I really, can everybody hear me? Can you guys hear me? Gail, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Massies. All right, so I've got some other colors here. I've got a really pretty um, quinacridone magenta by Charbon. And I'll tell you guys why I use Charbon in my bloom paint so often is because the pigment holds so beautifully. Um, so, you know, sometimes these sit around and I just need to thin them down. I don't see everybody adding paint to their bloom or water to their bloom paints, but I like the paint to move. So I like to get it to a nice, um, you know, warm honey consistency. So I've got that, I've got uh, a nice, um, it started as quinacridone Nicolaso gold, and then I, uh, there's a little bit of pigment in here too. And then I have another TLP pigment here called Ballet Slipper, which has been one of my all time favorites. Um, it's got like this really pretty peachy undertone to it. So it's really nice, and we're gonna we're gonna use the. Um, I'm not sure if I should use pretentious or. They're both really pretty. I have boastful and pretentious mixed up. Uh, we'll just use. Um, 
we use pretentious. So this is pretentious. And it's got kind of a shift to it. Um, like it's kind of a purple with a green shift. And when I wet it, I was kind of surprised by it. Like, but it's got, I hope you can see this. I've got some natural light here. So it's got a really pretty shift to it. And I don't use shift paints a lot. However, the quality of this one, uh, I can really tell. It's, you know, sometimes I feel like they can look a little tacky, but this is like really well done. And I'm excited to try. Okay, let me get my, let me get my pillow, which I just mixed in this old GAC bottle, but it's kind of a nice, um, light gray. Hi, Jan. Hi, Paula. Hi, Tara and Lynn. Um, nice to see you guys all here. This was very last minute, so thank you for showing up. All right, so we'll get our plate. And I always keep my um, cell activators mixed up in these little guys. This is one part Amsterdam titanium white and black oxide mixed with three parts of Australian Floetrol. And it's nice to just have them handy. And I'm going to use some, oh, I, I have to run. I'm going to go get my palette knives, you guys. Hang tight just for one second. Hi, Jackie. Okay, so I've got a little assortment. Again, Fluid Art Company, they've been sending me some really great stuff. Uh, this is the number oh, 51. It's great for swiping. And then I've had this little guy around, which I really like. And then we'll go maybe with a bigger one too. Hi, Carrie. Okay. All right, let's see if I can do this without live without making a huge mess. Well, it's fluid art. This is what we do. We make messes, right? I feel like I need one darker color to kind of ground this palette. So, you know, we've got, I like to play with warm and cool colors, so got, you know, a pretty good little mix here. I feel like I need something nice and dark to really bring it together. Probably go in with this nice indigo. Nice warm honey. Tam prune bronze. So I did these yesterday, but my pillow was too thick and I didn't really love the outcome. So I kind of thinned this down. This is my, I did a video called Pillow Talk. So this is not Golden Gack 800. I mixed in um, Bear 7300, one part that to one part white acrylic, about a quarter part Gack. And then I tinted it light gray. So. I think we'll do a black, we'll do a white cell activator since I'm working on a, on a gray pillow. Just put some of this guy onto my plate. And I usually don't paint and talk at the same time, so uh, wish me luck. All right, here's our nice pillow with a big goop in it. Oh my goodness. I hope everybody's getting 
getting ready for an awesome weekend. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Britt. Yeah, this was last minute. Um, just thought it'd be fun to kind of showcase these new pigments a little bit. And you, I don't know, you guys, whoever does blooms, you know, you gotta, I just mixed this pillow up yesterday and I let it sit overnight. Ideally, it would sit for like two days to really let the, um, yeah, Jackie, this is a, so I'm not doing pearls today, I'm doing a bloom swipe. It's kind of like the complete opposite end of the spectrum to my pearl painting. So this is like the thick bloom, um, yummy, I love this technique. So let's do... Let's see, composition. I think I'm gonna do three little, I kinda like to do things in threes, you know, rule of threes. Never really wanna pair something on a canvas, but um, kinda get in here with some indigo. And originally when I first started doing this technique, I would say Jessica Winterstrom was probably my I mean, Sheely, my goodness, of course, like she toiled away at this technique for like ever to make it what it is and bring it to all of us. But I really like the swiping. And then we'll get, I'm going to go in. Uh, yeah, Jackie, um, I'm going to, I'll link my pillow top video because um, this has been my favorite, favorite recipe for the pillow. I'm going to go in with a little bit of magenta. So starting with some nice rich colors here. I might pull a few other colors as I go because, because I like to keep it weird, you know. Here's just kind of a nice little like mauve. And I, I think this was uh, Amsterdam mauve, and then I mixed in some rose from Amsterdam, and then a color called tanned from Charbon. So it's kind of just like a funky little soft color. Hi, Linda. Yes, you can repeat. Okay, yeah, I will repeat the Pella recipe again, and I'll put it, um, I'll put it in my community channel, but there's a video called Pillow Talk that goes into depth about this particular pillow recipe. And you know, in the summer, pillows aren't so finicky, but where I live, when it gets cold in my studio in the winter, my, um, my pillows like to crack. My, I, have, I was having trouble last year with um, this technique because of the temperature changes, and this pillow seems to dry really good even when it's cold, or you know. 68 degrees. All right, let's go. You know, and I start, I like to kind of start with my more opaque colors at the bottom, my darker opaque colors, and then kind of move up into more translucency. And um, this is, this has some pigment in it. I think it has some uh, apricot by, by color art in here and some quinacridone nicolaser gold. Hi, Linda. Okay, sorry if I'm not keeping up with comments. All right, so we have some cool, some warm, and then I'm gonna go ahead and lay down the ballet slipper. Ooh, you know what we need is a little bit of this. red violet oxide. I'm like feeling the jewel tones today. Put a little bit of that in there. And this gray pillow, I'm kind of wishing it was a little bit darker. I might actually switch over to a black cell activator because I love a white cell activator when it's gonna go into my negative space into the gray. Um, but this gray is pretty light, so I think I might go ahead and do a black. 
All right, and then here's our piggies. So this is ballet slipper. And I, you know, kind of, sometimes I use golden fluids for this too. Um, you know, like their, their interference colors can be really pretty on top like this or a nice, you know, light colored pigment to kind of just soften things a little bit on the top. And then I'm gonna go with this brand new pigment, this pretentious, is that right? Really? You know. No black, no black, really? Should I go white? White cell activator? Now's the time to chime. White or black? White or black. Okay, here's pretentious. I'm just gonna lay a nice line. I want this to kind of be the star of the show, so I'm putting it right on top. Black, white, white. This is pretentious. Hi, Kathleen. Black, black. That's what I'm thinking too. If my if my pillow was a darker gray, I would go white, but I think I'm gonna go black. And hey, we might even do a little bit of both, so Let's see how it goes. Kathleen says black. Jane, all right. Okay, so we're just gonna move these out of the way. So I don't get paint splattered all over my little jars here. And I'm just gonna go in with a nice big palette knife to start. Coat the bottom. Wow. Can you guys see this pigment? I'm going to turn one more light on. Hold on. It's pretty wild. It's kind of like showing up as purple, but I know that when it dries, it's going to really want to shift over into green. And I mentioned Jessica because this is kind of what I learned from her, her cute little scoop and drag she always does to kind of give a little bit of different composition. And I'm going to go in with just a little bit of white cell activator just with my little guy here just to give it a little bit of something different on the outsides. You know, I always like, don't be afraid to use bull. I should. I kind of want to get into more like colored cell activators too, but. Oh, thanks, Kathleen. Do you recognize it? I, uh, <laughs> I was literally had co covered my first apron from Fluid Art Experience with GAC 800 the other day. So the Masseys were nice and sent me a new one. Like I was squirting GAC out of this, um, one of these things and the bottom of it blew off and it like exploded all over me. It was awesome. Okay, let's do another nice big swipe on this third section here. When you cover your palette knife with the cell is it a light amount of product or heavy? Um, pretty much just what it can hold, you know? I just kind of dip it in, um, you know, and like, it, it's the consistency of it's not crazy thick, so it'll just kind of stick to the back of your palette knife. Oh dear. This is what happens when you paint live. And 
can see that line. I was like, oh, that's fun. So let's try to scoop it and drag it a little bit. And okay, another way to fix something like that would be maybe to grab a little bit of white cell activator and break it up a little bit. I mean, that's going to be kind of an interesting composition. Let's see what happens. Half black, half white. Yes. Sea black drowning out color. Yeah, yeah, the black can do that a little bit. Um, oh, Kaz, you're my new favorite artist. I know, isn't she amazing? Kathleen's like the funnest person to be around, too, let me just tell you. She's hilarious. I'm going to go with the word spitfire. <laughs> All right, I am not loving this section here. What should I do, guys? Okay. You know, I'm going to kind of bring it towards the middle of the canvas. And I kind of like little sections of like, but I'm not loving that. And what's nice about thick paint is you can just kind of hide it, you know, just kind of dip your finger in it and bury it. Like if there's a little something you're not loving. That's the beauty of a nice thick pillow is like you have an opportunity to um, hide mistakes and I know you guys don't have all morning, so I'm going to try to get this going here. I really just wanted to highlight these new pigments. Kathleen is sassy awesome with sauce. Oh, yes. Feeling the love, Kathleen. All right, so I'm just going to take my pillow a nice little drizzle around the outside. Oh, Sandy, all right. I'll paint with you all morning. <laughs> I like to kind of get this out to the corners just so the paint has a really good opportunity to move. Let's do it. Let's spin it. Ooh. See, this is better. Uh, for me, if the pillow's too thick, I just, I don't know, like, I like, I like a lot of movement. Do a little bit of tilting here. This is kind of interesting, this whole section of... All right. Yeah, this pigment's really cool. Um, and it's, it's kind of got a little bit of a transparent quality to it so you're really seeing like the underneath side of the um, of the other colors which is what i love about pigment this is driving me crazy right here. and you know for me like when i'm playing with these kind of getting the palette knife, not right on the section, but kind of up and under, kind of go up and underneath it and then drag 
your edges out just a little bit to kind of fix things up a little bit. Um, I really like the way this has turned out though. This section here, oh my goodness, is really pretty. And then you're really seeing that, um, that really pretty pretentious piggy. What was it? Pretentious? What did he say? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really nice one to lay over these other colors. And when they dry, I'm going to post a pic some really nice up close pictures of this after it dries so you can see how that pigment dries on top of these other colors. All right, I'm, I'm happy. Um, got a little bare corner here. The bear. Thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, Britt. Yes, pretentious. That was the pretentious, which is like this green and purple shifty pigment. And I'm pretty sure they're available on um, Fluid Art Company's website. So, And as you saw here, if you're spending a lot of money on, on an expensive pigment or an expensive paint, you know, picking this beautiful color palette and then kind of just laying it on top. You don't need a lot of it and making it the star um, and letting the other colors shine up from underneath. I mean, you can really, it's not like, oh, heavy, heavy sparkle and pigment, but it's like elevating everything else that's going on on your canvas. All right, I think that's it, you guys. Um, Atelier Interactive. Yep, for, are you guys talking about colored? Um, thanks, Sandy. All right, should we do another one, you guys? Does anybody want to stick around for another little painting? I'm willing to do another one. Yes? If you need to duck out, I don't mind, but I think I'm going to do one more of these while I have all my paints out and you guys are here. Let me just move this over to my uh, drying table. I'll be right back. with blue. Okay, I can pull some different colors. Hi, Sherry. Or hi, Sherry, are you saying? I've heard that you get better at doing lives the more you do them, so uh, this is the first time I've done this, so thanks for um, bearing with me here. doing is I'm just putting some pins in my canvas. <laughs> the fun part. This is my favorite part of painting is putting pins in the bottom of the canvas. And any other um, suggestions on color? Well, I think we'll keep the indigo. instead of pretentious this time, which has a little bit more of, it's kind of like when I wet it, it's almost like this beautiful burgundy wine color, purples and coppers. Hi, Claudia, we're gonna do another painting, so stick around. I'm just putting pins in another canvas here. 
And yeah, you can rewatch the whole thing too. Mm, okay. So I don't put any, what's nice, that this is just a cake spinner. And what's nice about these little 12 by 12s is they just sit right on here very nicely. Yeah, the subs are beautiful, you guys. Something different, you know. It's, um, I think it's the shift in it that's really intriguing. So we're going to play with. Uh, pompous. And I was really surprised how this looked wet. Um, but when I do have another one that dried, and it's kind of got this like really dark burgundy, and then it's got a little bit of a green shift to it. And correct me if I'm wrong, I know TLP's here, so. I love that light royal blue that you use. Okay, all right. Terry, this one? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll go blue, indigo, and we're using this kind of burgundy wine, green shift, so let's think about this. Um, oh, I always love quinacridone, a lovely deep red. I don't think I have a deep red mixed right now. Uh, we're going to play with I'm also going to bring a golden fluid um, interference gold in. to play with this really beautiful stuck up piggy. And <laughs> um, this is Atelier Gold. Copper, I don't have any copper mix right now. I could mix some copper real quick and show you guys how I mix. I don't know about, I don't know. Ballet slipper. Ballet, ballet slipper, Tara, yes. I've got some kind of weird colors. Um, like, I don't think this would work. See, if I pulled in this brick red, I would have to pull this blue out. You do you. Thanks, Sandy. All right. We'll go blue. This is kind of fun, though, having a little bit of influence while working. All right, Atelier Rich Gold, Ballet Slipper, Indigo. I'm really tempted to use, okay, we could, instead of Indigo, I could go with Brown. This is like a chestnut brown. This would be kind of interesting. Ew. Oh, this texture is really weird. No, we're not using that. Okay, I got it. I got it figured out, guys. And then our two stars of the show are going to be uh, Pompous, Stuck Up Piggy, and Golden Fluid Interference Gold. Is there a red? No. I don't really have any red paint mixed for bloom. This is Manganese Blue by Soho. 
And Soho paints are so interesting. Um, like their colors are are pretty unique, and I was really kind of surprised by the quality. I, you know, I generally turn to Amsterdam for a tube paint, but Soho has some kind of interesting colors. Their mineral blue is also really pretty. Copper. Debbie is voting for copper. We're going to mix some copper. Okay, I'm just going to start with some iridescent copper fine by Golden Fluid. And then we're going to hit it with what I did here is mixed um, this is one part polycrylic with one part deep base so it's like ready to go. And that's really all we got to do. Nice, huh? Simple. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, this is a different style. Usually I do, you know, talk over my video and all that. But this is, this is fun. I feel like I'm like with you guys. Cool. Pebio, Linda. Pebio Copper. I've never tried it. And this is like too loud for me. So what I'm going to do with that copper because I, for me it's just too like in your face, so. You guys are gonna think I'm a weirdo, but I'm gonna add a little bit of Venetian Rose, just acrylic tube paint, just a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of gold ochre You guys are like, you're ruining your copper paint. Um, and watch what this does to this paint though. Like, it's still gonna dry with that insane, beautiful iridescence, but it turns it into this kind of like a little bit earthier. going for it. I'm going to use the same gray pillow that almost made cute egg. Yeah. Thanks, Kathleen. Much better, right? Sandy, I agree. I, I like to tone things down a little. Okay, we're going to go in with our gray pillow again. Nice thick start so it can really move our paint around. And anybody that's just joining, we're doing a bloom swipe with the new um, Stuck Up Piggy collection from Fluid Art Company. I, you know, Linda, I'm so curious about PBO paint. Um, I just haven't really used it much, and I know that it's a fantastic line of uh, product. I've got some goops in here, but I'll try to catch them as we go. Hi, Dania. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to kind of build this in a similar way that I did the first time around. I'm going to do a little bit different composition this time. So I'm going to do my kind of like moth wing. I don't know if you guys remember the Moth Wing series that I did. Um, we're going to kind of play with that a little bit. Kind of these two little... This paint's a little thick, but it's going to work out fine. As long as your pillow is the perfect consistency, usually there's a little bit... Oh, thank you, Jay! Gosh, that's really generous. Thank you. PBO is amazing. All right, all right. I'll get some PBO from my studio. So, all right, let's dip in with this manganese blue. And when I do this, 
composition, I kind of like to mirror the opposite side just a little bit, like it's kind of like two little fish in a pond. Thanks, Tara. And gold, this is um, Atelier Rich Gold. There's something about this Atelier Rich Gold. It dries, like I don't love it when it's wet, but when it dries, it looks like metal. Like it looks like real metal, it's crazy. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Lee, I know, once you start doing bloom, it's kind of like, there's something really satisfying about it, right? It's like crisp and clean and, um, okay, let's lay down a little bit of this copper mixture right next to that rich gold. I'm not going to go real heavy on this. That's kind of pretty. It almost looks like a rose gold. And I just mixed this one, so it's got a little bit of air bubble in it. I need to take care of. Nice, Rose. Yeah, I've uh, deconstructed. Is, I've, I haven't really done that technique much, but. Okay, what does this need? I'm just going to play with just a little bit of this to kind of like break up that blue just a little bit. This is just a permanent violet by Amsterdam. And then let's bring in our, this is Interference Gold by Golden Fluid. I was afraid of crochet hook. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Interference Gold. And when I go in with Interference Gold, I like to kind of drizzle it around the outside and through the middle a little bit too, just so it kind of like has a chance to blend out into the um, negative space a bit. And then Pompous is our next. So I'm just gonna lay a little bit of this Pompous right on top, especially on top of these blues and purples over here, just to give it that really pretty shifty interference type um, shine. Karen, uh, yeah, it's, it's all about consistency. So I go a little bit thinner than some, th I, I feel like it's, you just have to play with it to find your favorite consistency with blue. I like to say like warm honey. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna go in with black. And then we might play with the white a little bit too. Oh dear. And what's kind of cool with this composition is that they're mirrored, so the way the colors like to come out, oh goodness. All right, let's go in with a little bit of white cell activator just for fun. And this is a very light gray Hello. So this white cell activator will give it a really pretty subtle feel on the outside. Um, I'm going to cut right through there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, these colors are kind of crazy. All right, let's try just a little bit of black through here. And you can do this kind of bouncy thing. It's always kind of fun. Like bounce your palette knife a little bit. It kind of gives for some interesting 
I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right, cool, cool enough. I might end up tilting some of this off that I don't like. We'll kind of see how it spins out. But so far, um, we're getting some pretty, like that interference gold and the, and the pigment are up on the top and they're really pretty. So I'm not loving this little like wispy. And sometimes when they're wispy, I, it's kind of fun just to drag it out a little bit and actually like enhance the wispiness instead of like if you can't beat it, join it, you know, just go with it. I know that the pigment is really, these, these pigments are, from what I'm, I'm seeing, they're just super unique. And that's why they're expensive. But, you know, you saw what I did. I just put a little bit of it on top of these other colors. Love up to the edges here. All right. I think we're done with that. You ready? Kind of make sure it's in the middle. I gotta fix this real quick. I don't want that, I didn't want that to be too thick of a line, so. All right, let's see what happens. See how this edge of the composition pulled off first, so I kind of, I'm going to tilt it back this way a little bit to try to even out the composition a little bit. Back it up so I don't get paint all over my clothes. Okay, wow. Crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm really seeing like consistency of pillow is so big. Um, I'll show you real quick this painting I did yesterday and my paint here and my uh, pillow was, so this was yesterday and it's cool. Like I really like it. You can see the pigments in it, but I'm loving this way more because I thinned my pigment down, or I thinned my pillow down, and I, I just really love the movement. Thanks, guys. This is fun. This technique always keeps me coming back because it's so crisp and beautiful, and I love the addition of that manganese blue in there. Like, it just gave it something kind of unexpected. I thought that was a really good call. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how these dry. I'll get you some nice up close pictures when they're dry um, so you can see how these pigments dry and how they behave. But um, right now I'm loving it. It's really the star of the show, right, right through here, right through here, and then that Interference gold is playing really nicely on the outside. So the blue really pops. It does. Heart by Sparkle. Hi, Sparkle. All right, you guys, I think I'm going to sign off for now. And maybe I'll do this more often. I really, really enjoyed it. I felt like I was like in really beautiful company this morning. And I felt very connected to you all. Um, and I'm going to continue to experiment with these pigments and 
see what else, see how else they work. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Any questions before I sign off? You can always um, comment or ask questions in the replay as well. So, all right. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye.